Good morning, guys. Um, today we're going to make a ring that is going to be very Christmassy. It's going to be a Christmas tree ring. So we're going to start by putting a picture. So we're going to go on the top view and we're going to use picture frame. So picture frame, which is here. We're going to choose this picture and just place it on the document. Don't worry about the sizes yet. And then we're going to align it to the center. So we're going to move it from here to zero enter to make sure it's on the axis. Okay. And we're going to trace this line. We're going to use this marker to trace this line. But something very important before we start tracing any line, <coughs> we need to make sure that our line starts on this axis. Okay. So that's why I'm checking grid snaps. I just need for the first point. Okay, so the first point has to be anywhere on this line. This is to make sure that my line is going to be closed. Okay, so I just got that first point, and then I can disable the other if I want to. And all I need to do is just oh, sorry, I did something wrong here. You see, I forgot something very important. So when doing symmetry, you need to make sure that symmetry is set to horizontal. Okay, so now if I just start the same the same thing again. I can remove the snaps, and now I just need to trace the line. Okay. So what I'm doing is just following the line of this. Okay. okay. Something like this. And here I don't need so much detail, so I can just click here. Okay. Cool. So if I hide this, if I hide this object, this is what I got. Okay. This is my line. I would also recommend that you align this object on the construction plane. So to do that, I'm just going to get a line and I'm going to draw a line this way and a line this way. And actually, I would probably draw another line like this and I'm going to trace another line going from here to here. Because I want to make sure that this component is aligned from here to zero. Okay. So now it's in the center. So now that I got it in the right place, I'm going to add this profile to my library. How can I do that? Just by add profile to library, profile, and here I'm going to go signet top. Okay. So I'm going to call it. Christmas. Okay, and save. Cool. That's my profile has been saved. So now that I got my profile ready, I can select the finger right and what's going on here? Oh, I had one already. So I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to use the signal ring builder, which is here. Okay. And all I need to do is just change the top profile from the circle to the one at the end, which is this one, Christmas. Okay, so that is my profile. I can play with the size if I want to. Let's make it quite big, I would say. And again, we have all the tools from the Signal Dream Builder. I would personally use the top pull push because I want to make sure I got a bit of space for the puppet that we're going to pull in a second. Okay. So that's a bit too much. I would say 27 maybe. And that, that is fine. Maybe even a bit less. Okay, that's fine for me. Cool. So one of the main advantages of matrix code is that everything that we've done so far is completely parametric. So if I change the finger rail, it will update the whole thing. Here it seems to be a bit of a bug. So this should be like that, okay? But yeah, I could change pretty much anything on the document, okay? And again, this should be failing. So we just need to change it to something like this. Cool, okay. So now you can see we got the ring ready. So now it's time for us to start putting the stone on it. 
So I'm going to start with, um, let's see, we could probably use the gem placer for this. I, yeah, I think I'm going to use the gem placer. So I usually would start with a line. So I'm going to draw a line from the quadrant in here to the quadrant over there. Okay. So now let's go gem placer, select your face, this one. I'm going to check the near Osma. Okay, that's going to help me um, position the stone right there. So let's go maybe a bit bigger. I would make sure that parameters are fine. I could mirror this on the x axis, but not just yet, because the first line is not going to have a mirror. Okay. So let's start with putting stones. Okay, I got the spacing of 0.15 always by default. I will usually do something like 0 0.15 or 0 0.13. Here I can go a bit smaller. I will always try to, well, if possible, depending on the stone that you're using, but we could use like bigger stones just in the center and then going smaller toward the edges. Okay. Okay, that seems about fine. And now is when I can use the mirror command. Not this mirror, this mirror. Okay, so you see I got 1.5 in the center. Now I can disable the near point. So I got 1.5 in the center. I would try to go with 1.4 at least. I would probably start with that form over there because I'm going to need smaller gemstones in there. Okay. I just need to keep trying whatever fits the shape of it well. Uh, that's going to be quite tricky if it's colored stone, but if it's sounds, it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to go with this. And actually, what I can do also is uh, disable the outer space. So I can play a little bit more with the sizes. Okay. So here I'm going to be the point 0.9. If I put the cloth in there, it's going to be fine. So again, Keep playing with the sizes of stones. And because we're only doing half of it, the other half is being done automatically pretty much. Okay. You can see it's getting there, right? Yeah. You need to use bigger gemstones in the corner because if we use much smaller, well, it could work as well. And then you need to delete a stone, you just need to get in the center. The big distance. Okay. So yeah, I think it's gonna be better we go this way. You yeah, always like zoom out every now and then just to make sure that it's looking good. Okay. Okay, that's looking quite good so far. Okay, so we have the basic shape of the ring with the stones already in place. And now we're going to work with the uh, prongs. So we're going to position the prongs on the surface. To do that, we're going to use prong of surface. And we're going to use the option of mirror Y. Because it would allow us to simply move it to one side. And it will automatically be placed on the other one. Okay, it's really easy. So we're just going to lower it, lower it in position. And all we need to do is just place, make sure that the, the jumper is fine. So for example, in this one, I would probably make it a bit bigger. So I'm just pressing E on the keyboard. And again, I could just keep positioning my prongs. Okay. They're all pretty much the same sizes for the stones. So I could just go here. And if I want to make it bigger, just go here. Where is it? Here on the avatar and make it a slightly bigger, okay? Which I could also do that, do that with Q and E on the keyboard, okay? So I just place it, and if I want it smaller, press Q. I place it, if I want it bigger, press E, okay? It's like this all the time. So, yeah. So we finished doing the power, 
and the next step will be to make the ring hollow and run the cutters. Okay, so now the last step, well, one of the last steps to finish the ring will be to make it hollow. The way I would usually do this is by basically making spheres that I would use as a visual reference. So I would say on the, the thing that's on the top here, I want it to be 1.5. So my sphere is 1.5. Okay. So my sphere is going to be here. Make sure you place it where the metal ends. Okay. So it's here. And then I'm going to place another sphere of 1.2. And I'm going to put it on the side of the shaft. Here. And then the same sphere, I'm going to copy it to the other side. Okay. And I'm going to put it here on the side. Okay. That will help me understand the thicknesses of my ring. So, what I'm going to do is just scale this down with copy. I'm pressing Alt and Shift at the same time. I could probably change it to another layer. And now I just need to make it a bit bigger. Okay, so something like this. And as you can see, that's my top thickness. So I don't want that to be any thinner. But I can still play with the thicknesses from here. If it's easier for you, what you could do is just select the spheres and press hide with the right button of the mouse. That's going to isolate the geometry that you don't want to look at, that you don't need to look at. So if I just scale this this way, and I scale this up a little bit, make it a slightly bigger. Okay. So now the solid is in the right place, but of course, I don't want this fall over here. I don't want this recess area. So all I can do is delete all. Um, if I got that option, I don't seem to have that option. So I will need to explore it. This whole thing and this, and this, all of this. Now select the whole thing again, join it, and copy it. Okay, so I have a clean solid inside of my shank. Okay, that's exactly what I need. However, of course, I don't want the bottom of the ring to be hollow, I don't want it any hollow in here in this area. So I will need to do a cage edit, cage edit, money box. Enter four, four, and four is fine, and three degree is fine. So enter again and global. So enter again, and then just select these points at the very bottom and write this up. So basically, what I've done is I created a solid inside solid, okay, to make the hollow. I can remove all this and then start it. Now I can just do a regular Boolean difference, but I can do it from here as well. Boolean difference. First group, enter, second group, this one. And as you can see, I got my hollow piece in there. So just press enter and remove the sorry. Okay. For the last thing, the last step to do is just to drill the holes. So we just select the stones, go to cutters, gem cutter, and you will see the cutters are already made in there. So that looks wonderful. Enter. And now again, Boolean difference. This one with this one. You see the holes have been drilled, so enter. And that's it. That's our model finished. Merry Christmas.